Well, hello, everybody. We're going to take a look at the tail two from Obsbot. All right, so I'm looking at the tail too, and I've got it just mounted as a webcam right now, which is probably not the way that I'm going to be using this all the time. In fact, I think we should go outside and play around and talk about this for just a second. All right, it's almost dark, as you can see. It's really dark out here. Um, so I wanted to see how it would do like at dusk in some really rough weather, pretty dark. I'm over here. Mm, it's pretty good at following me around. All right, it's raining, so I gotta put this away. We'll take it somewhere else, maybe somewhere that's a little bit brighter. It's the first three-axis PTZ-R camera. It's 4K as well. So what is PTZ-R? Well, that's pan, tilt, and zoom. And then R is rotate. So it can follow you. It doesn't rotate full 360, but it can go most of the way around. So this has AI tracking 2.0. That's like their newest thing. It just means it has better AI tracking. It can even track you when you go behind things and pop back out. It can detect your motion and where you're going. And then we have a couple different modes here, and that's different from the last generation tail. You can track yourself or you can track a whole group. And that way, if someone moves or comes in, it can zoom in and zoom out. See what I've done right here? I've, I've drawn a box around this because I'm on my, if you just click on your little AI modes down here, and we could say like we do AI tracking. I want to do close up so it follows it closely. And I've also got the lighting balanced for this. So the background might look a little dark, but that's just because I don't want this to be overexposed. So I'm doing close up mode and I'm moving it around. So now I can just, you know, use this, move it around. It automatically focuses. So I move up close. It's focusing. I move back. It's going to zoom in and focus. And I can even like change hands, move it around. Let's, hey, over here. No, I'm over here now. So I can change the speed of, what, you know, that it moves. Right now I've got it moving crazy fast because I want to be able to, <laughs> to trick it and make it go crazy. But this is good if you have someone who's playing sports or whatever. You can have it follow that. It can follow whatever. Now let's move it to like lazy because I'm not going to be moving it around that much. Just, you know, I'm here on my desk. So I just want to be like nice and slow so it doesn't give you whiplash. Now, will it notice if I turn it around? Yes, it still does. It knows to follow this box. So let's follow the mouse. So all I got to do is just draw a box around this mouse right here. There we go. Now it's like, okay, I'll follow the mouse. Let's say I don't want to do the, the close-up zoom. So I'm going to click on the that and turn it off. That way I can move it back. It'll still follow it, but it's not going to like zoom all the way in. So that way you can see the whole scene. A lot of options here uh, when it comes to, you know, what you're going to do with this. Let's focus back on this. There we go. It focuses so quick. It's ridiculous. You know, AI is kind of a marketing term that we hear everywhere these days. But they're using AI to help identify certain objects. So right now they've got 30 animals in there. It can also identify people and faces. And then there are 200 different objects that it can quickly identify, whether it's food or whatever else. So the AI is essentially the database that they're using for the recognition engine. And also, if you're looking for like a group of like-minded people, they do have a Facebook group. It's private, which I kind of like because that means most of the people here are going to be serious about their craft. And you'll also get the latest updates about the tail and the tail two and everything else. Go ahead and do that if you like. I'll put the link down in the description. And now let's talk about that zoom in. Twelve pieces of optics on the inside. That's mostly going to help make the image not have any distortion and stuff. Uh, you can get that with smaller sensors or lenses when they are super wide with the FOV. But it also, you know, means we're going to be able to do some zooming. So we got optical zoom, plus we have 12x hybrid zoom. And that's because this is a 50 megapixel camera. You don't need 50 megapixels to produce a 4K image. So what's going to happen is as you're zooming in, well, you're just going to use some more of those pixels. So you got a bit of a hybrid zoom there. Uh, optical zoom is interesting because it, it's more like a traditional lens. There's compression and all that. But then uh, the other zoom is essentially cropping in on the sensor. So I'm using my background blur, but I can turn it off and there's still a little bit of background blur back there. Do you see that? That's because our lens is f1.8, but it's not as crazy as like a full frame sensor. So this has a one over 1.5 inch CMOS sensor. These things, these numbers always confuse me, but just know that this is almost like the biggest uh, sensor that you're gonna find in any kind of a camera like this. There are some out there that have one inch sensors, but I kind of like this one because it looks really, really good. 
And since it's 66% the size of a one inch sensor, you're gonna get um, a lot of stuff in focus. If you want the background blur, open up your OBSBOT Center and then toggle it on and off just like I'm doing right here. Toggle it on, toggle it off. Then you can add your background blur. I can move around a little bit. Do you see any weird artifacting? Maybe here if I move my fingers, you can see some weird artifacting. It's a pretty good implementation. It requires NVIDIA's RTX, but it's a pl pretty good implementation. Without RTX, well, you're gonna have to go over to this, the native background blur, and then I can crank this up a little bit. So this is what you're gonna get if you don't have NVIDIA RTX. Kind of sad because I feel like, you know, yes, we're using NVIDIA's broadcast SDK stuff here. Um, and by the way, the newest SDK for the video effects does not work. It also doesn't work in Open Broadcaster, so I'm, you know, it's not OpsBot's fault. It's, you know, NVIDIA released a new one that doesn't work with anything in the past. So software updates are going to be coming, but yeah, I had to go and grab the older version of the SDK, the video effects SDK. So just going to tell you that. Anyway, when I go over to the advanced, I can, you know, you can crank it up. This is the NVIDIA version. But if you crank it up too much, you will start to notice some, you know, artifacting around your head and stuff. I think it looks pretty good even on low. I've got it on one right now. But when you're out and about, you don't necessarily need the background blur, especially if you have something and you want to see everyone in focus, even the people in the background. If you're at a concert or something, like a, that's really what this thing is designed for. If you're at one of those venues, I think it's probably a pretty good idea to have this smaller sensor because the software and the quality of everything else that's going on, the lens and everything, still give us a clean picture. And if you're worried about noise from a small sensor, well, we have dual native ISO, meaning you have uh, an ISO that's tuned specifically for bright lights like outdoor situations, and also another ISO that is like your native ISO that's tuned for darker situations. Most cameras just have one. Your native ISO is like 400 or whatever it may be. And then as you deviate one way or the other, it's not gonna look quite as good. You're gonna have more noise or whatever, but having two native ISOs, which I think is a really good idea and a lot more cameras should be doing this, tuning for two different ISOs. Well, now we have two different options, one for dark and one for bright. Like right now, I'm in a very dark room. So using this in a studio, you have NDI support, and it's also compatible with NDI HX3, which is the latest, greatest when it comes to compression, just faster performance over your Ethernet. If you're just joining us, well, that's the NDI is a standard that allows you to stream video content over Ethernet, which is amazing for studios that want to have a bunch of these things hooked up. And then you can access this specifically by its IP address, and it shows up in your OpsBot Center under the IP address, but it also uh, works with different programs like Open Broadcaster or more professional things like the TriCast. So if you have a whole bunch of these on a TriCaster and you're running, I don't know, a theater or something, concert hall, a really professional newsroom, with, you could put a bunch of these up there and have it switch in between them. It'll all work just fine. And HX3 is the, the latest, greatest thing when it comes to compression. So you get better quality and just faster performance. Another really cool thing about that Ethernet port is it also can deliver PoE meaning power over ethernet. So yeah, that's it. You just plug it in, you get an IP that becomes your video signal that you can run wherever, and then you're also powered and ready to go. Single ethernet cable's all you need. Then you have your uh, 3G SDI connection there. Again, just video, not for audio. And then we also have the SD card slot. And the SD card is what we're using to record within the field. Just make sure you get something that's fast enough to keep up with 4K uh, and some high bit rates. Um, you have connection support for all this stuff right here on the screen. I'm talking Unreal Engine and Blender. So yeah, you can be running around in your own Unreal Engine creations. Yeah, everything from 3D Studio Max to Maya, Blender, whatever. Uh, Cinema 4D, lots and lots of stuff that you can use this with. Pelco D and Pelco P. So if you've got a controller that works with those, you can use that to control all these. All right, let's talk about the resolution. So it's 4K at 60 hertz compared to the previous model was 4K 30 and 1080p 60. This one's 4K 60 and 1080p 120. So if you want to get some slow motion, you can use the 120 uh, with 1080p. Still have the 1080p quality, but you know, 60 4K is also pretty good if you wanted to you know, slow that down to 30 FPS and you still have some pretty good uh, slow-mo. Let's talk about some of the other connections and certifications. So we've got our NDI certification. It's SRT Ready, uh, RTMP, and RTSP. Some of this stuff, honestly, is stuff that I haven't used before. So if you're in the industry, I just want you to know that it's there if you need it. Also, we have RS-232 in and out. We have mic in and line in. There's no um, microphone on this unit. Uh, I think it might have been okay to have a little mic on there in case we, you know, we wanted to go home and like sync up audio with an external source. It would have been easier, but it's also pretty easy just to plug in a small mic and then you can also have external audio if you wanted to. But hiding from the rain right now, doing a little bit of a mic test. See how this sounds in here with my small lav. The rain kind of got to us. I hope the water uh, doesn't bother this thing. It got kind of wet. <laughs> uh, it's Portland. You can't go outside without getting wet. 
HDMI is HDMI 2.0 and we've got our gigabit ethernet also on the back and we have two USB-C one USB-C is so we can plug this up and use it as a webcam the other one is for charging and oh we can charge this 5,000 milliamp hour battery that's one of the reasons why it weighs uh, I guess two and a half to three times as much as the previous tail model it's because the battery is bigger it's still a very small unit for what it is so you're going to get about five hours of battery life on this so if I want to lock the target on me we have a few gestures for that like this we'll just lock the target right here and then I don't think I have it turned on right now but yeah you just hold your hand up to lock the gesture like the target zooming in and zooming out is as easy as just doing this and then if I want to zoom back out or zoom back in I guess do it again there we go so that's kind of cool because you don't even have to get out your your phone you can just do it with gestures all right we've got a night mode on this and there's a couple reasons why this looks really clear at nighttime uh, and you know the previous camera didn't have a night mode so what have they done first off the pixel size is two microns so that's going to help with some low noise but they've also got the software that's really the story with a lot of cameras in the entire world today is the software is getting really good they're using uh, some really good ai algorithms to reduce the noise at nighttime now this is not going to rival like a big Big, giant full frame sensor but this is a totally different experience because this is a pan tilt zoom rotate camera so being able to have that outdoors at nighttime is really cool so as far as mounting this well we've got just a standard tripod mount on the bottom i can put this onto a gopro mount and it'll work as long as it's tight so you do you i would probably not anyway i just wanted to let you know it does fit on those if you you know screw it on there and snap it on so with stabilization we've got a couple different things going on here we've got the three axis stabilization which is like analog style but it also has some ai algorithms that are helping under the hood because we a lot of pixels to play with there and it's you know pretty easy to keep things stable when you've got that many pixels plus the three axis stabilization going on as far as the wireless connection goes well it works with up to wi-fi 6 and i don't have wi-fi 6 on on my device but it's it looks like real time i don't know how it's doing this without wi-fi 6 i've just got like wireless ac but it looks like real time on my device it's almost real time <laughs> i feel like a muppet you ever just wake up and feel like a muppet this unit's also equipped with tally lights. God, I've been out of the industry for a while, but yeah, it's got lights that tell you, hey, it's it's recording now. So you know when it's recording and you know when it's safe. Next up, it does work with the Obsbot talent. So if you want to have like a little portable studio in your hands, you can grab one of those. They also have some kits together you can grab with all this. So take a look at these kits you get. You get three NDI certifications, the talent, the smart remote, as well as three cameras. So you can get a kit that has all the stuff you need to get this up and running. It does support all their software like Obsbot Start, which allows you to stream, and then Obsbot Live, which allows you to connect up to three of these cameras and then do some streaming. And then Obspot Center, which is what I'm using right now uh, to be able to capture this footage on my computer, but it gives you pretty much full, ridiculous control. If you're curious about the Obspot Center, just take a look at my Meet video. So we have some different focus modes right here. You can basically go through everything. HDR is coming soon. And then we have our exposure compensation. I like it dark, dark, so I, you know, do it on my face and the background's bright, whatever. You can set your upper ISO limit. I keep mine at 1600. Anti-flicker. Then we can do different colors. If I want to do custom, I can do that. Make it, oh, make it crazy, but I'm just going to do standard right now. And then, of course, we do have our entire beauty suite over here. But that also has the background blur, which I keep on with the advanced settings. But then we have some retouching. I do tone, smooth, and clarity right there just to even out the light a fraction of what they would do in a real studio. But I don't do any uh, of this stuff because I want to look like myself. But if you wanted to, you could come in here and be like, you could do your eyes and make your eyes huge. Like, hey guys, what are you doing? What's up, everybody? Anyway, you got your makeup settings and stuff. If you want to go crazy, let's just bring up that grapefruit. Mm, I'm lovely. All right, we're not going to get into that. I've done that before in other videos. And then I like to use Pure, but there's all these different filters that you can do. I like to do it this way because I don't like to do color correction in post it's not as much fun, but you've got all these different settings. You can go through nature, fresh, whatever, black and white, black, let's make it noir. It was Thursday, the day after Wednesday, and he was standing in a rainy room. Yes, back to pure. This is the one I like. It gives it a kind of a soft filmic look, more filmic than film. I don't know. Film's just super contrasty. One last thing to show you is we do have all this right here. And, you know, I've got it. Let's go to presets right here. Got my different presets set up so you can set all those things up. And here's all our gestures you can turn on. Um, tell it to stop recording with that, but I'm not going to do it right now. 
So the way this focuses is really cool. Right on the top, it's like shooting these infrared beams. Then it can actually detect the distance from when those beams hit you, and that's how it focuses really quickly. It like shoots the light beam, it measures the distance away, and then it knows how to set the focus. So that means it can focus really quickly. Like if you run around and go somewhere, it can keep focused on you. Plus the fact that, you know, generally with the smaller lenses, you have more stuff in focus anyway. You know, having something that's like this and also really fast, it just means that you're not going to have to do a lot of that seeking nonsense where it's like trying to find the focus. All right, so let me know what you think of this camera. Let me know what you think of the quality. I don't honestly know if I'll be using this indoors. In fact, I think the Meet 2 is probably just fine for indoors because it's a webcam. It's more made for just using for whatever I'm doing right now. The sensor is, I think, the same size. So the Meet 2 is probably okay to continue using just as a regular webcam. But if you want to do like certain fancy stuff, I can't imagine like there being anything better than the Tail 2 right now. When it comes to like the technology that's gone into it, the ports, the options that you get, the battery life, uh, the fact that you have PoE, all that kind of stuff adds up to something. And plus the compatibility with just pretty much industry standard stuff. Uh, I think this adds up to being one of the best PTZ cameras I've ever seen. And then you throw in the Rotate 2, PTZR, it just sounds weird anyway. That's what it is. Let me know what you think of the Obsbot Tail 2. All the links for this stuff, you'll see the pricing and everything. That'll all be down in the description. And, uh, you know, maybe it'll go up and down, but just check the links down there. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the comments. Mm -hmm.